Hello everyone, welcome to the numerical methods class. This class is about chapter 13, curve fitting, and specifically we will be learning about the linear regression under the curve fitting. There are different curve fitting techniques, but this chapter is specifically about the linear regression. Let's first have an introduction for the curve fitting. First of all, data are often given for discrete values along a continuum. Basically, we will we can have a function, continuous function, but we don't know the functional relationship. We just have it data, maybe a few number of data values. And we want to have the general information of the function based on this data. So we may require estimates at points between the discrete data values. And that's why we may require a simplified version of a complicated function. And we need to use that data to be able to have this version of uh, the function. And we compute values of the function at discrete values along the range of interest. So curve fitting uh, is about to fitting a curve to discrete data to obtain intermediate estimates. Basically, we have two cur curve fitting approaches. The first one is least squares regression. It's also called regression directly. And it derives a single curve that represents the general trend of the data. You can see here we have a data with some error and we can have maybe we can combine these like each data passing through by passing through each data. But instead we can also have a general linear trend or also we can have a polynomial trend as well. doesn't matter, but it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to necessary. It doesn't have to be necessary to pass through all data, let's say. And the other one is interpolation. And in the interpolation, we fit a curve or series of curves that pass directly through each of the points. So in this now, uh, the lines or the polynomial has to pass through all the, all the points, all the data. You can see here linear or curvilinear, doesn't matter. So we will be learning about these two. But in this chapter specifically, we will learn about regression and specifically the linear regression. We use curve fitting in engineering in many applications because usually we have some experimental data or some numerical, after numerical calculations, we can have some data. Because we don't know the underlying function, we try to find that by curve fitting. So we have tabulated experimental data, as it says here, from which we predict the intermediate values. You can recall this or remember this uh, from the thermodynamics if you remember there are tables of data and you are you are using some interpolation to be able to get some intermediate values so two types of applications exist in the predicting of uh, some values based on the data in engineering the first one is trend analysis and the second one is hypothesis and testing so in the trend analysis basically the pattern of data is used to make predictions if the data are measured with high precision then use interpolating polynomials because in the interpolation the uh, curve is passing through each point has to pass through each point that's why uh, that means we need to have high precision of the data then we can allow it to pass through each point but if the data is uh, low in low pre precision imprecise or have some errors we know that then instead of trying to passing through each data we can have a general trend of it by using some least squares regression so it can pass through in between some data points getting some average basically as a regression line and forecasting outside data is also possible um, but extrapolation can be a little bit uh, erroneous based on the uh, used function but still it can be used extrapolation to uh, predict some data beyond the limits beyond the uh, beyond the values of data let's say the second one is the hypothesis testing. In this, actually, this is an ex existing mathematical model um, and it is compared with measured data. So we, we know that there is some model that can represent a data, then we compare them. If the model coefficients are known, are unknown, this mathematical model, then we determine the values of the mathematical model, the coefficients that best fit the observed data. 
So this is basically a kind of a curve fitting. But in this, we know the mathematical model. In the trend analysis, we actually just fit some functional relation to a data rather than trying to make a comparison. And if estimates of the model coefficients are already available, we know the coefficients, let's say, or estimates, we compare the predicted values of the model with the observed values or data to test the adequacy of the model. And this testing is called hypothesis testing. And uh, often alternative models are compared and the best one is selected based on the empirical data or observations. So um, this one is actually used usually with the statistical uh, distribution distribution techniques and usually we have for example a data normally distributed or log normally distributed but we don't know which distribution fits to data so we can try different distributions and find which one fits the best you can do the same for maybe regression as well you can fit a line regression a polynomial regression second order third order to decide which one gives the best um, and defining the best by comparison is called hypothesis testing. But if you are just fitting a data, uh, fitting a curve or a line to a data to get the uh, general pattern of it, then it's trend analysis. Usually in this class, we will be learning trend analysis part. But this is also valuable if specifically if you are working with statistical data. Well, we said that we are going to be working with regression in this class and let's introduce that here let's say we have a data as you can see here and we have actually very close values but very far away in y we can say maybe with depending on this uh, data trend uh, this kind of data usually have error that's why this is higher than this for instance uh, while we were expecting like maybe a regular straight line in which this will be low this should be lower maybe there is an error on this or maybe this is the line and this has an error instead of having here it's here anyway we have some data and we know that we measured it with some error we are not so sure about our measurements then we can use regression and rather than pass uh, having a curve passing through each data we simply use a line for instance passing through in between the data so that we can have the general trend because if we try to have such an interpolation like this, this is called interpolation because it's passing through all the data. For example, here, usually we expect the data is in between this, and but it's very far away. It's over here when we try to predict a value here. Similarly here too. And we, we would expect a value around here if for this for a value in here, maybe it's somewhere here, but this polynomial gives us a value over here. So it gives maybe er erroneous results. That's why it's inappropriate because it gives out of range results in between points, the interpolations that pass through the all points. But in the regression, it fits the general trend of data without passing through the points. That's why this is a good approximation because it gives in range prediction between points. For example, here, it gives an expected value which we expect a value around here so regression is useful and we generally use that uh, to fit a data in engineering because usually our experiments are not very precise we have we can some, have some errors so this is very useful and that's why let's uh, learn about how to fit a line to a data which is called regression Regression polynomials can have different degrees. The lowest one is the linear regression. Basically, we fit a line to a data um, and the data has X and Y values. X's are the uh, independent values or the inputs and Y's are the calculated values or measured values or the outputs. So we can have two options manual fitting. So this is basically just visually inspecting data, plotting that by hand maybe then uh, sketching a best line in between by hand or by drawing a line basically. So this is called an eyeball approach because we use our own eyes and manually try to you know, draw a line. Uh, this can have common sense appeal and 
are valid for back of the envelope calculation. So we just want to have the trend visually, let's say. But they are deficient because they are arbitrary and subjective, subjective to the person's drawing uh, preference, let's say. And that's why the di different analysis would draw different lines. For instance, I can draw this, you can draw something like that in between. Many lines, there are many lines can be drawn in between, but they are very close to each other, but still there are still differences. So that's why the manual fitting is not good for having uh, trying to have one best fit for this data. That's why automated fitting is proposed and to remove the subjectivity issue, uh, some criteria must be devised to establish a basis for the fit and this automated fitting is proposed. And one way to do this is to derive a curve that minimizes the discrepancy between the data points and the curve. So basically we fit a curve, then calculate the differences. These are the differences between the curve value and let's say this value, this for example, the curve pre predicts this and this is the difference, maybe error. Here as well, there is an error here too. We try to minimize this. If you minimize the this difference or these errors, all of them, then we, you can have one unique line. And the, a technique for accomplishing this objective, minimizing the errors, is called least squares regression. And we will learn about this in the following slide.